What's up guys, my name is Brandon and after using iOS 16 for a couple of months now, I wanted to share my personal favorite features so far. Now Apple is planning to add more new features to the software over the next several months and that's why you should subscribe to this channel to be informed when those new features get released. But for now, here are my favorite features in iOS 16 so far. First up is the battery percentage in the status bar. This is something we've been waiting on ever since 2017 when the iPhone 10 got released. So if you go into our settings in iOS 16 and go to battery, you will see that we have a new battery percentage toggle right there. And if you turn it on, it will enable that right there in your status bar. And then also if you turn it in low power mode, you could see the icon turns yellow and we still have our battery percentage in there. Now, this is pretty controversial. Some people like it, some people don't. It is kind of hard to see when you're running low on battery because you're used to just seeing a visual of it and not necessarily reading numbers, but it is there if you would like to add that to your status bar. But keep in mind, this does not work for every single device with a notch. So you can see right here, the devices that this works with. Next up is easily one of the most useful features in iOS 16, and that is the ability to translate pretty much anything anywhere. So for instance, if I go into my notes right here, of course, we do have text right there, which we could easily select and translate, but that's not really the most useful part. So you can see it translates it right there. The useful part here in iOS 16 is when it comes to other things, more specific things like degrees, like time zones, like currencies. So if I tap on the 180 degrees right there, you could see I can convert that to Celsius to Fahrenheit. I can convert the angle. So if I just do the drop down right here, it shows me those conversions right there. If I tap on that 9 a.m. GMT minus five, it shows what the time is in my current time zone. It shows it right there and it gives me the option to create an event, a reminder, or show it in calendar or currencies. If I select this right here, it will show what that is in my select currency on my device, which happens to be US dollars. So it converts that right there. And it also works in applications like your messages. For example, you could see if somebody sends you something in messages, you could do the same thing. Just simply tap on it and it will convert it right there in real time, which is super useful. And that goes hand in hand with live text and videos. So in iOS 15, we were able to use live text and photos, but now in iOS 16, we can do live text and video. So you can see that was a video recorder right there. And we have the live text icon down there in the bottom right. And I can select any of this text. I can convert it. I can go to the website up top. I can copy all. I can do all of that from a moving video, which is just awesome. Now, speaking of photos and videos, if we go back to our photos application and go down to the albums tab and we go all the way down to utilities, you will see a new folder in utilities called duplicates. And this is going to show you all of your duplicate photos and it allows you to merge them together and it will keep the highest quality one of the duplicates found. So I'm gonna merge these two photos right there, tap on merge and boom, we're done. We now have deleted the duplicate of that photo or video. You could also do this in the contacts application. So if I go into my contacts right here and go to all of my contacts, you will see up top, it shows that 107 duplicates were found. If we tap on view duplicates, it will show them and I'm able to merge all at one time or I could select certain ones and merge only certain contacts. My next favorite feature in iOS 16 is when you take a screenshot, which I take probably a hundred screenshots a day. I take so many screenshots. So this feature is awesome. When you tap on done right now, we now have a new option for copy and delete. So when you press on copy and delete, it will delete that screenshot, but it copies it to your clipboard so that you can paste it in your group chat, in your email, whatever you're trying to do with that screenshot, you're now able to paste it into wherever you're trying to send it without actually clogging up your photo library by saving it to your device. Now, if you're somebody who locks a lot of notes on your device and you're tired of having to remember another password for the notes application, now in iOS 16, if you go into your settings and go to notes and then to password, you can see that you now have a new section here, a new option for choose a password method. And you could either use your device passcode or custom passcode, which of course before we only had the option to use a custom passcode for notes. But now if you select use device passcode, you can go ahead to continue and it will use the on device passcode 
for that. And it will even say right here that it updated to device passcode, use your device passcode to manage your locked notes. My next favorite feature has to be the weather application just as a whole. I mean, the weather application looks so much better in iOS 16. There's so many more features in the weather application than ever before on the iPhone. So now if you go into weather right here, you can see if we scroll down, first of all, if we tap on today right here, we get this. So we have a graph of the temperature, but I could also change that right here to the UV index. I can change it to the wind, precipitation, it feels like humidity, visibility, and pressure. I have all of that. So if I change it to precipitation, you can see it shows like when it's going to rain. I can drag my finger across here and see different you know stats we also have the type of precipitation down here so we have rain sleet mixed and snow so you can break it down by that we have a daily summary there's just so much here and if we go down there's even more down here so you can see we have like these card views now for our uv index our sunset our precipitation all of that the feels like and now also if you tap on this right here we now have a precipitation map view so you can now see the next hour forecast and if you tap on that you could also change that to a 12 hour forecast so it will show you everything on this map right here in terms of precipitation if you tap on that you could change that to temperature or air quality as well i love the new weather application in ios 16. oh and also if you tap on these three lines right here and go to the three dots up in the top right and go to notifications you now get alerts for severe weather and next hour precipitation so you can now get those alerts as long as you have the location turned on always for the weather application and speaking of default applications the apple maps application now finally gains the ability to add stops to a destination. So if you were going from Orlando to Miami, for example, and I wanted to add another stop and put it in between there, if I needed to stop for gas or something like that, I could put multiple stops in between there on the destination by simply tapping on add stop and I can move these around to change you know, where I want to go first or last. And the good thing about this is that it's also built in to CarPlay. So if you use CarPlay on your device and you have Apple Maps pulled up, you're gonna now be able to add stops and route to your destination. Another one of my favorite features in iOS 16 is the ability to sort playlists. So now if you go into a playlist in Apple Music and you tap on the three dots up in the top right, you can see that we now have a new option there for sort by. And if you tap on that, you have the option to sort by playlist order. So whatever you set by time title, artist, album, and most importantly, by release date. So if you tap on release date, it will show the newest songs first, and of course, the oldest songs last. So now finally, we can do that on a per playlist basis. Like if I go into another playlist, it will not be using those same parameters that I used in that playlist. So each playlist, you can sort by, you know, its own specific criteria. And I was going to save this for last, but I may as well just talk about it now since we just talked about music. But my next favorite feature is the option to have the album artwork on the lock screen. So now if you tap on the album artwork, it will show it big here on the lock screen, just like old times in iOS. I love the option to do this. I love that it's not a default feature just where it defaults to that. I like the option to be able to choose if you want it to show or not. And of course the background will move and it takes, you know, the dynamic colors or the dominant colors from the album artwork and puts that as the background for a really, really clean look. And you'll also notice when I press on play, we have this cool little waveform down here in the bottom right hand corner that actually goes to the beat. And now since I'm already here, I cannot leave the lock screen without talking about my next favorite feature, which is probably one of everybody's favorite features. And that is the new lock screen customization. So if you tap and hold on your lock screen, you now get the option to select between multiple lock screens. You could tap on the plus right here to see, you know, add different photos. You could add the astronomy and weather lock screens, the collection the colors you have all that I will make a whole separate video on the lock screen for iOS 16 you could also add focus modes you can link them to a specific lock screen but mostly what I'm talking about right here is if you go to the customize section you can now customize the look of the clock the font right here so you have all these different fonts to choose from you can change the colors you could change all of that right there you also have the option to add widgets now so you have all these different widgets to add right there right underneath of the time which are really really useful I love being able to see like the temperature when the sun sets things like that my event calendar I can see what my events are coming up next 
with certain applications. You could open up apps straight from the log screen. So if I wanted to open up Twitter, I could just tap on that right there. If I tap right up here where the date and time are, I could also set it to have my next alarm up there, which I found to be really useful because sometimes it's off when I need it to be on and that lets me know that. So just a ton of things you could do here on the lock screen in iOS 16. You could even add filters here. It's just awesome. I love the lock screen customization in iOS 16. You do also get the option to set as a wallpaper pair or customize your home screen from right here. And of course you do have other options for the home screen as well. If you wanted to blur it or not, you can do all that straight from this section, which is awesome. My next favorite feature is the magic feature in iOS 16, and that is the ability to remove subjects from their background. So you can see I have a picture of my cat right here. Nothing special. It's not in portrait mode or anything like that. But if I tap and hold on at the subject right there, you can see this little white line goes around at the subject and I have the option now to copy. If I tap on copy and I go into my notes, for example, and I tap on paste, you can see that the subject is there with the background cut out. And again, that's like magic. I love this feature. It's so awesome. I've used it several times to cut out like somebody's face from an image or just a person from an image. And you could put that on a different background or you could just use it for whatever you want to use it for. It's just a really awesome feature, at least to have the ability to do that from any photo. It's just awesome. And while we're in photos, I also love the new photo sharing feature. So if you go to the three dots right here, you now have the option to move to a shared library where everybody can see that that is a participant. So they can, you know, view, edit, or delete that photo or video at any time. So if I move that to a shared library, it moves it right there. And if we go back and we tap on these three dots up here in the top right, you now have the option to view both libraries, your personal library or your shared library. So if I go to shared library, it's only going to show the photos that I have shared. So you can see right here, if I go to recent, it will show these right here and you can see there is a badge on top of all those photos that indicates it is in the shared library. And of course I can add other people in here if I want to, if I tap on that right there, you can see you have the option to change that as well to show both personal or shared. And if you want to add somebody to the shared library, you just go into your settings and go to photos and then to shared library right here. And you have the option to add participants. And from here, you just add in their contact. And also you'll notice that when you go into the camera application, you will see a new icon up there in the top left that indicates it's going to the shared library or not. So you can see a shared library. If you turn that off. It goes to your personal library. So you can change that like on a per photo basis. Like if you wanted to take a photo and automatically upload it to the shared library, you could do that straight from the camera app. This feature is just great all around for so many different reasons. Like I know my grandparents are going to want to see photos of, you know, my vacations and things like that. And I won't have to worry about sending it to them. They could just see it in that shared library, which makes things a lot easier. My next favorite feature is a controversial one, but that is the ability to edit and unsend messages in iMessage. So now if I send a message to somebody, you can see right here, if I tap and hold on that message, I now have the option to edit or undo send. So if I tap on edit, I will get the option here to type in something else. I will type in hello there and tap on the little check mark. And you can see right under that, it shows edited. And if you tap on that, it will show the previous edits. And the other person can also see these previous edits. And if I wanted to unsend that, if I tap and hold on that text and go to undo send, it will undo that message right there will unsend that and it will tell the other person that I unsent a message, but they will not be able to see what it said unless they're on iOS 15 or earlier. So if somebody's on iOS 15 and you're on iOS 16 and you try this, those people are not going to be able to see, you know, the edits, but they will get a separate text message saying that you edited that message. It will just come across as a second text message, but they will not be able to see, you know, that you unsent a message. If you send a message and you unsend it on your side, it will not unsend from their side if they're on iOS 15. And if we go all the way back, you can see we have our all messages, known senders, unknown senders, and now we have unread messages and recently deleted. So you can now see recently deleted conversations that you deleted right here. So if you accidentally deleted a full message thread, you can now get it back from the recently deleted section. And one final thing I love about the new messages app is the fact that we can now mark as unread. So if I swipe to the right right there, we have this new blue bubble right here. If we tap on that, you can see it marks that message 
as unread. So if I you know, read something and I know I'm going to forget to respond to it, I can now mark a message as unread, which is nice. My next favorite feature in iOS 16 is the ability to change how your notifications come in by default. So you can see right here, we have our notification center. I can swipe down, of course, to dismiss that, but we have different options for how this appears. So we go into your settings here and then go to notifications. You can see up top that we have a new display as section and you can see we have count, we have stack, and we have a list. And those are the three options where you can change how your notifications come in you know when they appear on your lock screen for the first time so i think count is really cool because it just shows the number of notifications you have it doesn't show exactly what it is but it just shows it as a number stack is cool because it looks like everything is behind it and then list view is kind of just shows a list of all your different notifications but i love that you now get the option to choose how you want those notifications to come in by default and then my final favorite feature in ios 16 so far is if we go into our settings and go to our icloud section and then to password and security if we scroll all the way down to the bottom you can see that we have a new option here that says advanced and it says automatic verification and this basically is going to allow you to bypass captchas in applications and in safari by allowing icloud to automatically and privately verify your device and account so this is a way that apple is working with cloudflare which pretty much owns they pretty much run the internet at this point almost every big website uses Cloudflare and they put out a blog post on how this works but basically you're not going to have to use captchas anymore to like log in or register on an account it's going to bypass that by knowing that you're a human because you're using your iPhone with a legit Apple ID which is awesome of course it's not out for every website right now it's not perfectly integrated just yet but it is coming very soon and that is going to be a very awesome feature but anyways guys there you have it those are 16 of my favorite new features in ios 16 so far again more features are to come of course i will cover all of the features in ios 16 in future videos so make sure you stay tuned for that but if you guys enjoyed this video i would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up let me know in a comment down below what your favorite new feature is in ios 16 i'm very curious also if you do enjoy these type of videos i would appreciate if you subscribed to the channel but anyways guys thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.